How hard would it be to build a half-scale version of the Cybertruck? Welcome to the Cybertruck Unveil. Yeah! Trucks have been the same for a very long time. Like 100 years, trucks have been basically the same. We want to try something different. Ooh, you can put 3,500 pounds in the back. There we go. Can you see it? Yes. You gotta press that button. Order now. And it's ordered. Do today. Thanks, order. That's $100 I'll never see again. How hard would it be to build a half-scale version of the Cybertruck? You guys might remember an overpowered electric go-kart that we made a while ago in partnership with my neighbor Stan and his company Accelerated Systems Inc. Well, we decided to give them a call and it turns out their CEO, Bill Yeager, he's a big fan of Tesla, which means he was down to help us out again and provide the electric motors and drive controls to build a half-scale Cybertruck. These are the three biggest speed controllers you guys make? And uh, what are these rated to? 72 volts? How much should we run these at? The, the motors can take whatever, right? Is okay. it can they take 72 at 800 amps? If you wanted to do things that involve speed, then having a higher voltage battery pack is going to help you get these motors to go faster. Okay. Cool. Well, it's a half scale model, so we want a 0 to 30 number, you know? This test stand is basically what the front end of our Cybertruck will look like. Excited? Oh yeah. This is going to be so powerful and so fast. Whew. Having those motors and drives, that gave us the green light to start designing. And this time, we're going for a three motor design instead of one. To start, we collected as much information about the real Cybertruck as we could. Luckily, Elon Musk left a few tidbits in his presentation, including this slide showing the overall dimensions of the truck. So we didn't cheat in either width, height, or length, and we're able to achieve much greater capability in the same, same dimensions, same weight. Using just this image, we're able to reverse engineer the general shape of the truck. Once we had the rough shape of the truck done in SolidWorks, all we had to do was convert it to sheet metal which is easier said than done. Luckily, with only a few rage quits, Bogdan managed to get it all folded into sheet metal parts. All right, so we've got a configuration for each individual sheet metal assembly that we're gonna to use to create the cyber truck. So we have the truck bed as a single piece, three folds, sorry, five folds. Look at that, beautiful. When we're done, we'll export everything as drawings and see how much space we're looking at. Based on the designs, it looks like we're going to need over 300 square feet of 1 8 304L stainless steel sheet. So we're going to get that on order from Metal Supermarkets, and in the meantime, let's start building the drivetrain. So James, where are we? So we are in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so this guy apparently sells uh, golf cart parts and things, so we need a rear axle and differential. And apparently Stan, our neighbor, says this guy can hook us up. Look, there's a, there's a golf cart right there. Alright, so we're in luck. We got the rear end off of a club car go-kart, and it fits in the back of my stinger, just barely. That's one concerning thing, there's a small wasp nest underneath this. Oh. Rear end of a club cadet golf cart. Whoops! Oh god! Merry Christmas. And that's how you deal with wasps. Alright, so here we are picking up the golf carts. We got one loaded in here, and the other one is in our trailer. Now I don't really know if that's actually gonna work sticking out like that, but we're absolutely going to try it. And it came with so much free dirt. You wouldn't believe how much free dirt we got. We just picked up a couple of scrap uh, easy goes, and the nice thing with these is they've got some work steering racks, so we should be able to pull those out. That one should have a nice uh, front axle, this one will have extra spare components, leaf springs, bolts, nuts, uh, and hopefully we can make one working front axle. We've got the rear axle now. Model that up, cut some stainless steel, and we'll have a working cyber truck. 
Hey guys, what time is it? It's almost midnight. All right, so we've just about finalized the main sheet metal design, but now we have to finalize part of the drivetrain and the suspension system, which means we need to 3D model all these parts so we can actually put them into SolidWorks in order to actually figure out how this all can go together. No problem. Yeah, but it also goes like this. That's fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> That's not a triangle. You could have even more help than it is. That's the so much welding steel should be, should be the this cheapest, be the cheapest the part of the project. And I've never been it's got to be like steel. Steel. free motors, free speed controls. We already have the batteries. Those are the three major things that cost money. Everything is greasy, everything is rusted, and there's crap all over it. It's good! Is this what you've been waiting for all day? No, all my steel. This is turning into like a really big project, eh? Fine, I've only spent like 200 hours this week on it. I think our stainless steel is here, let's go pick it up. clean them up and then we can start uh, bending and welding them. All right, so we got all the stainless steel cut, um, about 200 square feet right now. And we're ready to start folding, so we're gonna see how that works. Look at that, it works. Woohoo, there's the first bend. How's it feel, Buggy? Oh man, that's gonna be exhausting. We got like a dozen more to go. All right, so those were the easy bends. Those were the only 90 degree bends. Everything else is a random number from SolidWorks. Pretty damn close. Elon, the actual design better not be random angles that you chose. Oh, look at that. Oh. This is the front steering wheel like this, so we need to bend this that way for the right side. We're like eyeballing these on point. 103 degrees, Chris, 103 degrees. Pretty good. That is our front bumper. So the, the, the fancy LEDs go right here. Is it fit? Is it fit? Oh. Oh. Elon. Elon. Oh. It's so pretty. So like this thing's gonna be like that big. <laughs> you're, gonna be, you're gonna be sitting like this. Dope. Alright, 
coming together. So basically the next goal is that we're gonna put that thing on flat across here, just like the bottom one. Finish an hour, this will be the earliest I've gone home since Friday. There you go. I think we're adding a sunroof, right? <laughs> like you can completely lie down inside. You'll, you'll get oh, it's a two-seater. So we got the final pieces of the Cybertruck cut. We're going to make the base plate and the roof of it, and then we'll be ready to mount the motors. When we welded it, the, the frame is slightly twisted, and we think it's just this one side piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the welds, let it sit flush again, and then hopefully re-weld it without the twist. The problem is if we leave this and we start welding more stuff, we're going to keep adding up the stresses, and the whole thing might twist even more which we definitely don't want. We're, we're off by like an inch right there, David. It's level. It, I, think, I think the unlevel was literally the uh, event. It's still a bit crooked, but it's done. This is actually the most people that we've ever had working on one project while I've been here. Dave, you comfy? Now we just have to weld all of the seams. It's probably like 50 to 100 linear feet of welding. So that's probably like 50 to 100 hours of welding. So I've got a few of my friends who know how to weld, or at least know how to MIG weld, and we're gonna teach them how to TIG weld to help speed this up. So once we get all the welding done, we're gonna have to do a whole bunch of grinding, clean up the welds, and then a whole bunch of polishing to make the whole thing super shiny. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna be using an angle grinder to get rid of the welds, and then we're gonna be using something called the Porter Cable Restorer to do all the uh, polishing and kind of like buffing. And we've been testing out the different drum sanders that this tool comes with, and we've basically figured out that we want to use um, some of the scotch Bright style ones at first, and then finish up with this nice radial scotch Bright disc. It's uh, the 240 grit version. And as you can see, it makes a pretty, pretty shiny finish. All right. So no Cybertruck is complete without its very own electric ATV in the back. So we got this awesome ATV. We're gonna soup it up a little bit and it'll be our mini ATV to go in the back for a half-scale Cybertruck. Let's see what this thing looks like. But this cat-themed ATV already has the signature Tesla Cybertruck hubcaps. How do I get my foot to the pedal? Here we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, it is a perfect fit. Yeah, right, we need we need a chrome plate this thing. So we've been working tireless days on this project, and finally... Our tires arrived! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so we've got all our speed controllers and motors from Accelerated Systems Inc. And Stan, one of the guys who works there, has generously offered to come help us program these things since it's a bit over our heads at the moment, uh, but we'll be learning how to do it. So let's get these motors spinning. So the important part, I think that that switch is, is correct. Once the switch is correct, the, 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 the throttle won't stop us from getting this thing spinning. So we got positive to positive, and this is gonna be 48 volts? Yep. All right, so like, hit it, you should be good. Now we wanna communicate with this thing. Let's cross. <laughs> All right, uh, let's have our set up. We're gonna give it a shot. Connect. There you go, you're in. Connection. Sweet. So I'm gonna hit one, and when I hit enter, you should hear a little noise. Yep. And this thing should spin at about 100 RPM the end. The brakes work a bit, you can hear them, you can smell them. <laughs> mm. To learn more about the motors we're using for our Cybertruck, check out Accelerated Systems website, where you can buy an identical motor kit to ours for your own electric vehicle project. Big thank you to Accelerated Systems for providing these motors to us. How long have you guys worked on this project now, hours-wise? Hours-wise, probably over 100 easily, per person. Well, it's been a week. Normally, there's 40 hours of work in a week. But this is Hacksmith Industries. We, we can see the end, like it's, it's quite realistic and reasonable to actually do it in two weeks, which is pretty cool. And I think that's a testament to this new facility and the team we have here, so. All right, so we've got all the speed controllers plugged in to the same throttle. So hypothetically, when we turn it on, we'll be able to get all these wheels spinning at the same speed. So, then geometer at zero. Ignition. Turning on ignition. Now, just, just a little bit. Well, that's not great. Ah, I don't know. Okay. All right, have fun. Don't burn down the place. So we just wired up the two front motor controllers. Unfortunately, we can't do the back one because uh, the lugs are unreachable under that trunk and we gotta take the whole axle out. But we're just gonna test the two front ones, see how what kind of torque we get with the two less powerful hub motors. You guys got them. Whoa. It just one time. Do it again. Just Do it again. It. Just done it. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. All right, it works. Oh, there goes our table. <laughs> Not a scratch on the Tesla. No. Look, look at those tire tracks. 
<laughs> and we're not even at full power yet. No. No. Uh, we're not even at half power yet. No. There you go. It's like nothing ever happened. Bricks are good. Okay. Yeah. Test number two. Right. This time. Spin out those tires. With brake. All right. Turning on ignition. We are live. <laughs> How was that? I took a lot of braking force. Three, yep. two, one. Nice. Let's try putting this chair in. Let's see if that's any better. And let's try it. So we can lower this down, push it forward, and we're flying back a little more. Like Actually, that. Alex has a gaming chair. Not for long. All right, Alex's gaming chair. No. Yeah, you're gonna have to replant it a bunch to make it fit. Slide forwards more. Oh my god, it's huge. <laughs> I think the top's the problem. Now where do the foot pedals have to be? Back here? That's a little bit. I'd like to like move back a little bit from the steering wheel. I mean more like All right, apparently we need a slightly smaller office chair. I guess this would mean Alex gets this chair back. All right, so we're almost done welding together our half-scale Cybertruck. There's just a few more welds. I just have to shift it over, and that'll be it. And it's just a whole bunch of grinding, and who knows how long it's gonna take to polish this thing to really make it shine. Let's get to it. One more to go. That's it. That's all the welds. I mean, the welds, they aren't the prettiest, but you know what? None of us here are actually professional TIG welders. And you know what they say, a grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. Unfortunately, we're not actually painting this because it's stainless steel. We're gonna brush finish it. So for the power source of the Cybertruck, we're going to be using eight of these lithium polymer batteries from Tattoo, which are 22 amp hour and 44.4 volt nominal, and they feature a battery management system to keep track of the life of the cells, as well as show us the battery percentage and feature over voltage and over current protection. These lithium polymer batteries are way smaller than a lead acid while featuring twice as much power. And they're way lighter too. <laughs> all right, let's see if these all fit behind the seat that we don't have. Buy two Ooh, more. That's a good we'll get 10. Six. Like literally on every page and on all their website manuals and on the stickers, just says do not pull on the wires. They must be really concerned about me pulling on these wires. Well, don't pull on the wires. But like, why are they so concerned? Like these look like sturdy wires. If you want to see how the electrical system of our Cybertruck works, make sure you check out our circuit diagram on maker.io. There are links in the description below. Once we finally finished welding, a stainless steel fabricator on Instagram reached out with an offer to help. Having nearly 15 years of experience in working with stainless steel, Craig was able to give us some tips and tricks of the trade to make sure we didn't spend any more time than we had to on polishing the Cybertruck. Now that we know how to do it, let's get to it. All right, so now that we know how to finish stainless, let's get to it. And the team continued to grind for days and days and days and days and days. So these are hopefully the seats for the Cybertruck. And it comes in pieces. Sweet. And then we're gonna make custom brackets like this to hold it in a fixed position. Can't return it now. Gotta make it fit. Wait, 
take your weight off of it. Yeah, take weight's off. off of it. All right, so we finally managed to get the seats mounted in. It was a bit tricky because we had to line up the holes from the bottom of the vehicle. And you can't see the holes when you're just on the seat, so. Uh, we did it! So comfy. And the nice thing is the actual uh, frame of the seat will help reinforce the bikes. If we had a, right we a heel rest for that, would that be nice? I think we can design a heel rest into that design. I would like that, plus have an edge on the left side. So, you can't so I can't go like that. Okay. Kind of scary having all your feet, legs, and side. Uh, I'm just thinking, like the steering, like put the steering wheel in. <laughs> put your foot all the way in? Yes, I know it fits, Bob, but. <laughs> Well, well, let's, I mean, just imagine, like, sure, okay. let's say Elon Musk wants to visit us and see this, and then we, we get him to sit in the well, car. Well, he should have made like, a bigger full right, scale Elon, Tesla, uh, just, just so that our half scale your, Tesla would be less small, okay? Squeeze your foot between <laughs> these uh, pointy, sharp things. You, you guys didn't that? consider this when you took on the project, did you? No. We absolutely considered this. No problem. Okay, but it also goes like this. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. That's another triangle. We knew it was gonna Did be you possible, but not comfortable. <laughs> it's only been three weeks. It's actually not, not bad, it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. It could be a lot worse. So the Cybertruck has a really futuristic steering wheel. Now, our EasyGo steering wheel looks very similar, we just need to chop the top and the bottom off. Now that we have our new Cybertruck steering wheel, we gotta reassemble the shortest steering column. Our steering column is gonna sit all the way up here, which means we need a way to transfer the power all the way to the bottom kingpin. In order to do that, we're gonna put together a steering linkage that's gonna join from the top to the bottom in order to allow us to transfer the motion. It's gonna go right between our kingpin linkage and our steering rack and going to give us our steering authority. All right, so all these steering components are in. We got all the batteries charged up and in the back of the cyber truck. Now the last step is put the last seat in and drive it. It's a bit tight. The driver has to get into the passenger seat first and then slide over to the driver's seat and then the passenger can get in after. All right, we're gonna throw up ignition. Do you want to the ignition switch? I get the ignition switch. This is terrifying. All right, you guys ready? Oh, yeah. First drive the cyber truck. Oh, I thought I had to turn this on first. No, it breaks. So success. Success. We could go so much faster, but we don't have brakes. All right, so, Box is really excited to test drive it for the first time. Uh, it has all the capabilities of having real brakes in the back, uh, regenerative braking using the actual motors and speed controllers, but we haven't set any of that up, so there are zero brakes at the moment. But Bogdan wants to go, so Bogdan's gonna go. Full power or anything like that. 
truck looks so good on camera. It looks like a cyber truck. Alright, you guys ready? Alright, floor it. That was awesome. So I'd say that's a pretty successful first run. What I've noticed is we have have no limits on the uh, current acceleration of the motors. And if you actually gun it, the wheels just spin out. So you gotta actually control the acceleration at the moment to actually get it to accelerate as fast as possible. But I think that once we have brakes on this thing, it's gonna be so much fun. So for the rear bumper, what we're actually doing is we're fabricating it out of multiple pieces. This is the underside that goes onto the cyber truck. And then we have this uh, metal piece that we made that's gonna hold the license plate that goes onto the back, followed by this big plate, which is nice and strong to hold our trailer hitch, which we'll be bolting on to the back of that. And then a final piece at the top, which is going to close up the entire bumper. Bottom scale. There we go. So this will be the very bottom plate and the undercarriage of our Cybertruck bumper. And then we're using box tube around the perimeter to offset it just like the real truck. Let's go build it. This line should go all the way down to there. Double check. All right, so to make some test windows for the Cybertruck, I'm actually gonna have to go back to the old shop where the old laser cutter is right now. So let's go there. All right, so to do some of the finer work on the Cybertruck, we're gonna come back to the old garage to use the laser cutter to do a custom glowing license plate that says Cybertruck, let's get started. All right, so we have the license plate all loaded up in our laser cutter software, and we just have to send it to the laser cutter. It's pretty marginal uh, return on your investment over 600 with this motor. It's I was wondering, if we went to 800 amps, what did they spend? Yeah. Put, it up, put it up to 700 and we'll... <laughs> You're on the chain. Right. So that back room was spinning the whole time? Yeah. This one too, that's cool.
like nothing! I want a pair of these, these might be useful. Yeah, that was actually... <laughs> they know my heart! Oh my god! Worth it. <laughs> So after approximately six million hours of grinding on the outside, we're done. But now we have to do the inside for another six to 15,000 hours. So let's get right to it. We just finished grinding the interior of the Cybertruck. First, because the edges were sharp, but secondly, because we're going to be vinyl wrapping the entire inside to give it that true Cybertruck aesthetic. Scale Cybertruck dashboard. You want to actually slide it through the window? Make sure it'll scrape. How do you think this is going? Not great. Turn it. I don't entirely agree with what we're doing, but I'm not going to stop. That's approximately what it looks like. <laughs> so we just got the windows installed temporarily into the vehicle so that we can align our dashboard, make sure that it's perfectly straight. Uh, it looks good, we'll weld it into place, and then we'll see if the marble fits in. Just be careful of the windows, we don't want to scratch them. So this side is going to go underneath that lip there. How does that look like on your end? Uh, it looks pretty good. Um, this side sags a little bit, so when we're actually welding it, we got to make sure to, uh, to hold it up. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's put a tack on either end and then we'll be able to take the windows back out, do the full welds, and hopefully make the mounts for these as well. All right, that sits just about perfectly. No Cybertruck would be complete without its unique folding tailgate design. So I've been here trying to make it work on our half scale model and I think I figured it out. Let me show you how it works. So first we'll have a hinging lid which will open in order to access the mechanism. Then there's two supports that will fold out that will actually provide strength to the body of the ramp. And finally the ramp will be able to slide out and unfold like a staircase so you can drive up it. There's a lot of moving pieces in the design, so it's important that we have an accurate model to ensure that when we build it, it can unfold properly. All right, that's the last little bit of welding done on the tailgate. So now we've got a nice working lid. So the next step is to assemble the whole thing. Let me show you how it goes together. Now that we know everything fits, let's go mount it on the vehicle. I'm working on brake lines. For the power loader? Cybertruck.
This thing will feel so much more fun to drive when there's actual brakes on it. With such a heavy truck, you have to make sure to be able to stop on a dime. We just got the mechanical brakes installed on the truck, which are not only going to be more responsive, but also more reliable than electronic braking alone. So our DigiKey order just came in, and these are some of the last parts we're going to need to finish up the electronics in our Cybertruck. And this is what I'm really excited about. This is actually our power supply, which will be able to charge our Cybertruck from zero to 100% in under three hours. And it uses 220 volts, which means we'll be able to charge it off of any EV charging station. Thank you, DigiKey, for making this very complicated electronics project very convenient. If you'd like to see the full schematic diagram of the Cybertruck, check out the maker.io link in the description below. So what I'm currently working on is setting up the CAN bus communication between the ASI motor controllers and the tablet app. So we start off over here where you can see the signal being produced by the controller. That CAN line is being picked up by the Arduino and translated to show our voltage, motor RPM, motor current, vehicle speed, and the temperatures of the controller and the motor. Finally, it's being sent over to the app. It'll be able to display all of our information as well as control things like our lights. All right, so we were planning on finishing the inside of the Cybertruck using this uh, fake leather vinyl wrap. Problem is, we found out it's kind of hard to apply on the inside of the car. Usually it's meant to go on the outside of the car. There's a lot of seams, which we didn't really like the look of, and then if we ever wanted to repair it, we'd have to make more seams. So instead, we're gonna go with truck bed liner. Basically, a black rubberized paint coating that's nice and durable, and I think it will give a really nice consistent finish over the entire inside of the Cybertruck. And then we can also use that for the outside edges like the fenders and the bumpers. So let's strip down the entire Cybertruck. I'll get that truck bed liner on order and then we'll be able to finish the Cybertruck. Now that the interior and the exterior of the Cybertruck are dry, we gotta peel off all the masking tape and see what it looks like. In the last video, you saw exactly how much torque this thing has. I mean, literally, we were making smoke in the garage just burning those tires out but we want even more torque. So Stan's agreed to upgrade the rear motor for us so it has even more power. Let's go. Hey, Bill. Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we've got some new motors. We do. I'm, I'm excited. The motor that you're gonna put in for the higher torque application, what we've done is we've used multiple thin conductors in parallel. A lot of the motors, that, the high power motors that you see have been wound by hand so that they're able to get the high currents through. The first motor you've run, either the hybrid magnet, we've taken a small amount of neodymium and backed it up with a ceramic magnet. But for our new motor, it's pure neodymium. Very thick neodymium magnets. You can have a higher flux level without demagnetizing the magnet. The higher flux level will just lead to higher torque. Between the neodymium magnets and the more wire wraps, we're going to be able to run more power through the motor, get more torque. The new rear motor has 130 newton meters of torque. Add that to the front motors with 720 newton meters of torque together, has 850 newton meters of torque. For comparison, an F-150 V8 5 liter engine only has 400 foot pounds of torque at the engine, which of course means we're going to challenge it to a tug of war in the next video. So now that we're done painting the interior and the trim of the Cybertruck, we just need the finishing touches to get this thing done.
I've just finished programming an RFID module for a Tesla Cybertruck, which we use to scan the unique identifier on each one of these key tags. If it matches what's programmed into the Arduino, it trips this relay and opens our lab. It's really awesome seeing the entire electronic system work cohesively with the app. The driving mode tab allows us to control things like our ignition, driving mode gear shifter, and even things like our door locks and tailgates. We can even open the charging port. The lighting tab gives us full control over every light bar in the entire car, including the headlights, off-road lights, interior, truck bed, taillights, and even fog lights, as well as their hue and brightness. And finally, the motor controls tab shows us all of our CAN bus information for every motor. These are the finishing touches to get the Cybertruck done. All right, so at long last, the Cybertruck, sorry, the half-scale Cybertruck is finally done. It took a bit longer than we expected. I think when we first started out, we were expecting to finish it in like two weeks, which wasn't really realistic. Uh, especially with all the design and project creep we had. We just kept thinking of all these cool attachments and bells and whistles to add to this thing, which ended up making it awesome. Like, the charge port, like, we can literally charge this at any EV charge station. That's freaking awesome. And all the LEDs, the iPad as a dash, even the marble dashboard, like, we didn't have to do that at all. But because we did, it's a really polished project, and I think probably one of the projects that we're most proud of here at Hacksmith Industries. We have a super awesome test planned and grand reveal video. Good morning, can I please get a large dark roast? Three, two, one, go! You can help us keep making these awesome projects by visiting Hacksmith.store. It's not your usual YouTuber store because we're not your typical YouTuber, we're makers. We've been researching and developing these products for years now. And these are the products we truly believe in and use every day. It's all part of my master plan. For example, check out this water-resistant stone paper notebook and tool pen combo we have. It includes a stylus, ruler, bubble level, and interchangeable screwdriver tips. And if I was to travel back in time and only bring one thing with me, I would bring the Pocket Ref book, because it's jam-packed with the most useful information you could use to rebuild civilization. If the internet goes out, you'll be unstoppable. I call it the engineer's bible. We also just released the handyman version, focused more towards DIY and home repairs. This is our retractable screwdriver, which lets you effortlessly switch between six of the most common bits with just one hand. Get one now at hacksmith.store and help us keep funding these amazing projects. I'm your host, The Hacksmith. At Hacksmith Industries, we take fictional ideas from comics, movies, and video games and make real working prototypes using our engineering knowledge as a way to inspire people around the world to pursue science, technology, engineering, and math. As many of you know, we spent the past month building our very own Cybertruck, with one major difference. We built it half scale. To accomplish this was no small task, and it cost us a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears. We persevered and prevailed despite each and every roadblock along the way. And trust me, there are more than a few. Now, without further ado, Hacksmith Industries is proud to present the world's first half scale Cybertruck. <laughs>
Pretty cool, right? Let's talk about the specs. This Cybertruck has all the functionality of a regular truck while being half the size of the most popular pickup truck in the United States, the F-150. We did that by making it half the height, half the width, and half the length of a standard F-150, all while having greater capabilities and functionality than a full-size truck. And it's half the size with one-eighth the weight. By making the frame of the truck an exoskeleton, we're able to do things normal pickup trucks can't. The entire skin of the truck is made from thick, three millimeter, ultra-hard stainless steel. It's really hard. In fact, we're gonna show you just how hard. Franz, I mean Bogdan, our lead designer here on the half-scale Cybertruck, He's got a sledgehammer and he's gonna, he's gonna hit it. Go all out. <laughs> now how about the glass? Bogdan? You sure? Do it. <laughs> Look at that, not even a blemish. Tesla armored glass. Now, how about power? Now, this thing has a tri-motor design, just like its big brother. In fact, it produces around 600 foot-pounds of torque, which is 50% more torque than an F-150 V8 5-liter engine from 2020. Now, we could read you stats about power and torque all day, but that's not really our style. So, we put this truck to the test. Bob that back on, right? If this car breaks down and it needs a tow, I'm just gonna leave it. Well, that didn't work. Next! true test, the moment you've all been waiting for. A fully loaded F-150 versus the half-scale Cybertruck. Let's do this. Three, two, one, go! Okay, okay, well, that's not a really fair fight because that is a 5,000 pound truck and the Cybertruck probably only weighs just over a thousand. That's basic physics. So we're gonna load up the back of the Cybertruck to make it a bit heavier and see what happens. We need a bit more weight though. The world's heaviest Thor's hammer, which weighs 115 pounds. That's made of Oh Rolling! 
All right, so we got some weight in the back of the Cybertruck. Let's do this again. Let's get that chain tight. All right, you guys ready? Three, two, one, go! That's a win! That's a win! Yeah! Look at this! Half scale Cybertruck for the win! Half scale Cybertruck, 50% more torque than an F-150. Elon, let us know when you're calling. As you can see, this little truck has a lot of power. It'd be a shame to keep it all to ourselves. Like my Uncle Ben used to say, with great power comes great responsibility. Let's see how the Cybertruck is received out there in the real world. Good morning, can I please get a large dark roast with three milks? What better way to test a half-scale Cybertruck than in a half-scale village? the drag race of the century, a DMC DeLorean versus a half scale Cybertruck. Are you ready? I know you're ready. Three, two, one, go! Hey guys, we're here at Toronto Motorsports Park with Yuri and Jacob from the Straight Pipes and they're currently reviewing our half scale Cybertruck. Dude, this is the best. Yeah, I know. This looks so fucking like great. actually the best. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get interior shots? I just wanted to see. Yeah, we should probably do that just after. Yeah, I, I can even get it now with like the phone or whatever. You wanna hold that up? Try doing a donut or anything? Can uh, we do donuts? Yeah, like if you crank it and gun it, it'll do something. Okay, can I, I do it? Find a... Go out there. There's more than enough room there. Okay, I'll try that. It will. It will get bouncy. Like if you lose traction, it'll go. Yeah, yeah. Could you... Smoothest ride in the world, eh? Oh, yeah. I'll uh, I'll just drive up somewhere for the intro shot.
When are you uh, going to start your uh, pro racing circuit with the Cybertruck on uh, professional track? Pre professional, professional track. Um, good question. The answer is today, James. Today. And this is the first day of the Cybertruck Racing League. Um, can you get them to come forward a bit just or move those cones? That's good. How does it feel to see up beside the DeLorean? It's pretty freaking awesome. And when you angle the cameras just right, it looks like the real cyber truck. I lost the key card to the cyber truck going around the track. But it was the nice one that looks like the Tesla key card, which I wanted to give you in the video to show yeah. like, and now it's and gone. We were about to film that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to it. I went around again to try and find it. That's so funny. Like black, like, yeah. should be pretty obvious on the track, but yeah. I didn't see it anywhere. Well, we'll be going slow enough. We'll do a couple laps. We'll see if we see it. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta pop a hip. All right, we've got the drag race of the century, a DMC DeLorean versus the half-scale Cybertruck. You ready? I know you're ready. Three, two, one, go! You guys break it? What the heck is that? Is that from the motor? Uh oh. That's from the motor. There's a screw missing in the motor. What kind of sounds were it was it making? Clunking noises. Every time the wheel ran around, it was clunking and vibrating. Bad news. Looks like a few screws have come out of the hub motor. Oh, what we got? How many <laughs> do we have? How many are missing? Uh, we have one. There are five missing. I might have super glue in my truck. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the wiggle when you came around that corner. Oh. Uh, yeah, you barely yeah. made it around that corner. I, I made it around that corner. Back. Is there anything you regret about it that you'd want to change? Um, I think we added most features. Like we're like, oh, this would be cool. We should do this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Better laughs> steering would be good. Proper suspension. It's got Proper a lot of suspension. Golf, a lot of golf cart stuff in there. Yeah, the uh, just like the axles. Yeah. Like the axles and the steering rack are a golf cart. Everything else is. Uh, self the bright, like brushing the steel, I was like, you are happy with the little that turned Yeah, uh, it was a lot of work either way, but we got a fairly uniform finish. Back. That's, so, oh, that's so your regen braking? Yeah, okay. they don't work. Oh, yeah. yeah, so um, you slide to stop. Yeah. Um, and then degrees or is it just on or off? Uh, it's technically yeah. degrees, but it, it'll on feel on. more like on or off. Like you'll, you'll lock you'll... out the tires and skid a bit and stop. We have a seatbelt. Oh my god, do you, have, do you have mileage or not really estimated? Yeah. Like on it right now, or it just like what do you think it can do on range? A charge? range yeah. Oh, range. we really don't know. <laughs> we all good boys. Take two. Hopefully, like NASCAR race ready. Okay. Inside spark. Well, we probably should have more power tools and torque the bat. Fun fact: I've been in this DeLorean before. This is actually the DeLorean that I picked up with my Call of Duty exoskeleton at the GTA Expo back in 2016. And that's where we met Bogdan, who was the lead designer on our Cybertruck. So like small freaking world, right? Smiling. You excited to uh, drive your Stinger around so the track? So excited to drive my Stinger on a track. Never gotten to do that before and it's it's a bit of a performance car, so uh, I'm kind of excited. Hopefully I don't crash.
guys, I'm glad you've enjoyed our half-scale Cybertruck build. If you guys haven't seen the complete build series, we have a four-part series with over 60 minutes of content going over the engineering and manufacture of this half-scale Cybertruck. It's by far one of our most favorite projects and one of the ones we're most proud of. With me is Bogdan, our lead designer on the project, and we've collected a whole bunch of questions from both Instagram and YouTube, and we thought we'd do a little Q&A to talk a bit more about how this came to life. Okay, so the first question we have is, are you going to certify it to drive it on the road legally? So to certify this to actually legally drive it on the road with insurance and a real license plate, it's probably possible, but it would be a lot of work. Uh, you see, the issue is, because we made it half scale, it's missing quite a few safety features that are, are required to actually license a vehicle. So while we could do it, I don't think we're going to because it's not really a safe vehicle to uh, use on an everyday basis. And it would also probably cost a ton of money to insure considering it's a half scale Cybertruck. Yeah, well, we're missing uh, seat belts. We don't have any airbags. There's no side view mirrors. Um, Currently, turn signals are not uh, a feature, neither are brake lights, uh, and there's no crumple zone. Um, so all of those would have to be added on to actually get it certified, which wouldn't be hard to do, but it would take a lot of time, extra money, and really wouldn't make this any more cool than it already is. And also one of my favorite parts, the, the whole, you can see, when you're driving, you, you can see the driver's leg right here. Because, because the cab is so small, your feet literally almost go all the way to the front of the vehicle. So actually your legs are the crumple zone, which is not a good way to design a car. So it's probably not ideal for uh, legal road use. Plus uh, it has no doors. Speaking of which, why didn't we put doors in, Bogdan? Well, the thing is, even if we did put doors, it'd be extremely tiny and you couldn't really fit it through them in, in the first place. And actually making doors is a big design challenge, like getting everything to align properly, making them sturdy and having the forces of the car distributed while having huge holes to get in and out of is actually quite difficult and would have made this whole project a lot more time consuming and a lot more expensive. Yeah, we probably would have spent hundreds of hours just on the design of the door alone, which we're a YouTube channel, not a full out engineering company yet. All right, so speaking of safety, um, can we add turn signals? Yeah, so the actual LEDs on the entire car are addressable, which means we can actually program it to have turn signals, to have brake lights, um, and even to have like party modes, like police mode or uh, dance mode and stuff like that, and make it act to music if we wanted to. But th that's a lot of extra work to actually program it in. We'd need to add all the switches on the, uh, on the steering wheel. And while we could do it and it wouldn't be that hard, it would take extra time. And considering we wanted to get this out to you as soon as possible, we decided not to for the time being. But it is a future upgrade. So is it actually half scale? Yeah, so this is one of the most common questions we've gotten asked. And it is technically half scale. It just depends how you're looking at it. So basically, we halved all the external dimensions of the real Cybertruck in half. The length, the width, and the height. So it is half size on a piece of paper. But because this is a 3D world and the car is 3D, that actually means the volume of a car, if you scale the dimensions in half, is actually one eighth. So maybe it's actually one eighth scale. Either way, it's the only one half or one eighth scale Tesla on the road. Something we didn't actually touch on in the video, I don't think, is the material we made the windows out of. Bogdan, can you tell us a bit about the material? So the windows are actually made out of polycarbonate, which is actually a really, really strong plastic using real bulletproof glass. And it's pretty impact resistant. So I'm not sure if it'll actually stop uh, large caliber bullets, but for everything from rocks to large metal balls, it'll have no problem absorbing and blocking from penetrating. And if you guys haven't seen polycarbonate in action, you should check out our video on breaking into an unbreakable box, which is uses, uses the same material as our Cybertruck windows. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty tough. Speaking of our bulletproof windows, is the rest of the car bulletproof? So the rest of the car is actually made out of three millimeter, eighth inch stainless steel. It's only 304 L alloy, um, but it should be able to withstand quite a good hit. Small calibers, potentially nine mil. Again, unfortunately, we didn't have time to do that for our test video, but maybe in a future video, we'll uh, take it to the gun range and put some holes in it, yeah. or not put some holes in it. Yeah, so the, the real Cybertruck is made out of uh, 30 times cold roll, so it is a little bit tougher, but in terms of the thickness, even though it's a half-scale Cybertruck, we didn't uh, make the material thinner in order to ensure the rigidity of the vehicle. Yeah, the, the body of the, our half-scale Cybertruck is the same thickness as the real Cybertruck, which is pretty cool. Okay, so why do we not build it full-scale? I've seen this question a lot. 
Uh, personally, I feel like building a full-scale Cybertruck would be a lot less original. And the other issue with doing a full-scale replica is everyone, including you guys, would expect us to have every single feature as the real car, which would be really, really freaking expensive. If you can imagine actually building the entire car just like Tesla did it, it would probably cost us millions of dollars because that's the cost of prototyping a real vehicle. So besides building it half scale, we're able to cut the cost down and the material cost down. It's also more unique, more original, I think, and kind of a cool twist on it. And to be honest, we were actually planning on making it smaller originally. When the Cybertruck was first announced, uh, I pre-ordered it, obviously. And then a few days later, we got talking. We're like, you know, it'd be really cool to build a mini Cybertruck that we could put in the back of the real Cybertruck when we get it. Anyways, we looked at the size of the bed of the truck and we realized we'd have to make it like the size of a small like go-kart. And we thought, that's kind of lame. And then when we talked to Accelerated Systems Inc. about getting some motors and whatnot, we realized doing a golf cart sized one was a lot more realistic. So we decided to do that instead and ended up on the half scale version. Yeah, and ASI's motors are actually meant to go on golf carts. So the actual electronic system and actually mounting all the components was really, really easy with their system. Exactly. And the other thing with going full scale, it would have cost a lot more material and the fabrication time would have gone through the roof. Our car wouldn't have even been done by the time the real one released if we were doing a full scale one, which kind of defeats the purpose because then it wouldn't be the only real or the only full scale one. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's, we there's been other YouTubers who have made full scale versions, but they have limited their scope of what they actually did. And really it was more of a cosmetic full scale version as opposed to a full out replica, which is what we tried to do here. Well, that was almost political. That was a great answer. Yeah. So in our last video, we didn't actually show too much about how our iPad app actually works. So Vardin, can you explain a little bit about how you actually coded that to replicate a real Cybertruck dash? Right. So the actual app is pretty simple. Uh, it runs on HTML, just a web page that we're hosting. Uh, and the actual web page, when you press buttons, it runs some JavaScript code to just make HTTP requests to an ESP32-based Arduino inside the vehicle. So basically, it's just listening to the uh, request for the HTTP using a handler. And then based on that, it runs some code to trigger relays and whatnot, or responds back with a HTTP 200 command and just gives back all the information for the, the CAN bus and all of the, uh, the settings and stuff. So in layman terms, it's basically just a website where when you click on something, the Arduino does the other thing. So we've mentioned that we, the Cybertruck costs us almost $50,000 to make. How come? Yep. Uh, well, the, the main fact is prototyping can be super expensive. We've put thousands of hours of labor into this. And in case you guys don't know, this YouTube channel is actually a business and everyone you see in the videos is actually a paid employee. So once you add up all the hourly rates of everyone, the overhead of this facility and everything else, we're looking at over $40,000 just in labor to build this. Add that on to the $10,000 worth of parts and bam, we're at $50,000 or more than a real Cybertruck. Now, I know you guys must be thinking, how can it be more than a real Cybertruck? You can get a full-size truck for $39,900 today off the web. Well, not today. They'll be out in 2021, maybe 2022. Anyways, Tesla's Cybertruck probably actually cost millions of dollars to make the first prototype. Like I said, prototyping anything is super expensive. Doing one of anything, tons of money. Once Tesla spends another couple hundred million dollars building up an assembly line, they'll be able to bring the price down to $39,000 a unit, which is really cool. And that kind of like gives you some perspective on how much we take for granted for mass production. Like the only reason we can have vehicles for under a hundred grand each, which is still expensive, um, is because of mass production, because companies are making thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of vehicles. As you guys saw in our test video, we managed to out torque a full size F-150 with our half scale Cybertruck. That's that, pretty freaking cool. That even surprised us. Like, yeah. we, we were like unsure, like we knew it had the numbers lined up, but we were like, it, just seeing it beside the full size truck, it was just scary. Like it was ridiculous, the size difference, and you can't even imagine how much like power a little thing like this could actually have. And, and, and that's because electric motors are actually really torquing naturally, and even at low speeds. Unlike a gas combustion engine, which needs to be at a specific RPM to achieve maximum torque, uh, electric motors give that torque instantly at basically any RPM. And in our case, the front motors on our Cybertruck are actually designed for low speed, high torque applications. The rear motor is actually a more high speed motor, but it's actually fed through a 13 to 1 differential. 
um, which gives the back end a ton of torque as well. So if you actually add it all up, we have 2,410 newton meters of torque available at both the front and rear axle in total. Um, in foot pounds, that's 1,777. That's, that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's a giant. That's footpath. possibly more than the real Cybertruck. Yeah. But the trade off, it doesn't go that fast. We didn't actually show you guys how fast this goes, but uh, the top speed is a bit less than uh, highway, highway speeds. So anyways, we rushed to get this all out within the, the two months we've been posting videos, but there's still room for improvement and there's quite a few features that we still want to add to this to make it even a bit like, a bit nicer, including things like uh, the tonneau cover or the, like the, the truck bed cover, the rollout cover that the real Cybertruck has. And it's already in the app as well. Like we got all the controls for it. We just need to yeah, spec one and mount it on. Um, also maybe a winch in the front because it is a truck. Why not? Give it some power. And in uh, the back. And definitely some cameras as well, maybe so we don't have to lift the lid to look behind when we're reversing. And then uh, we actually have a bit of a partnership with ClearPath Robotics, which happens to do unmanned vehicle driving. So there's a chance we could actually use one of their self-driving modules to actually give this autopilot, which I think would be pretty cool. So make sure you uh, keep an eye out for the future Cybertruck videos. And of course, maybe a sound system. So we can have some tunes while we're driving. Anyway, this project uh, represents one of the most complicated and so far pretty expensive projects we've ever taken here at Hacksmith Industries. And we couldn't have done it without the entire team and several volunteers who came out and helped us during the build, including Craig from Hamilton. He's a uh, stainless steel fabricator. Aaron from Stratford, who helped us with the welding. My friend Evan, our new high school co-op Tyler, several former employees, including Charles, who worked on the electronics, and Ben, who also helped with electronics, as well as Ben's dad for some SolidWorks help. And Adam, one of our actual past employees, came to help with the brake system. So big thank you to you guys for helping with this project, because we probably couldn't have done it without you. Six months ago, we built the world's first half-scale Cybertruck. Since then, we've been bombarded with questions like this. And the internet has been flooded with pictures like this. This is not your grandmother's potato cannon. This is a fully welded and machined aluminum pneumatic air cannon. Let's see what it can do. Load some apples. Oh my god! That apple just blew up a piece of concrete. Does anyone else just like taste apple? Oh my god! <laughs> Our cyber truck needs to shoot more than an apple. So we actually machined this piece of Delrin, which is terrifying. So I'm gonna load this, I'm gonna go outside, close the garage door, and we're gonna fire it with all the cameras filming. Three. Two, one. That thing is freaking awesome. It's gotta be the most powerful potato cannon I've ever used. Now the question is, how are we gonna actually attach it to the Cybertruck? A few months ago, Ian picked up this. This is a hydraulically controlled a uh, gimbal for a fire truck nozzle. This thing can shoot hundreds of gallons of water. Now all we need to do is figure out how to mount the cannon to this.
querido diario. En dos cortos días vuelvo a casa, libre de este infierno. Cuánto añoro los dulces abrazos de mi mujer. Y no puedo esperar a ver al hijo que me ha dado, al que aún no he conocido. I don't know about you guys, but this feels a bit too 1940s for me. This is a Cybertruck after all. Let's add some new technology and bring this thing into the 21st century. To help the Cybertruck in the future, we will be working with the Lasers Master on YouTube, Styro Pyro. He sent us a video that shows his progress. Hey everybody, it's Styro Pyro here. Earlier this year, I was able to get my hands on some next generation laser diode arrays. Now these arrays are absolutely terrifying, so far beyond the highest laser danger ratings that they have to be operated with total respect, and high OD laser goggles are an absolute must. Wow, that's crazy! I did not expect to see the day where I could shoot through metal with a handheld laser. For my part in the collab, I sourced the array and built the driving circuitry for the build. It's actually quite similar to the setup I used in my 100 watt handheld laser video, and the driver provides a constant current to the laser diodes to keep him running happy. A quick test shows that the laser works great, but I can't run it here long without a heatsink or it'll burn itself up. Now I'm not much of a machinist, but this is where the hacksmith gets to use his magic to come up with a mounting and cooling system for this crazy array. Now the hacksmith has been operating high powered lasers for years, so he knows to treat these unbelievable powers with respect. So without further ado, I'm handing over this piece of insanity to the hacksmith. As a matter of fact, we've recently received a shipment from Styro Pyro. Let's open it up and see where we're at. So we've got the laser driver, but more importantly, the diode. Wow, look at that. So this is the laser diode. This little thing has 100 watts of blue laser power. That's ridiculous. As Star Power mentioned, this diode puts out a lot of heat. So we'll need a way to cool it. To do that, we'll go the easy and efficient way of using water cooling. This water cooling loop is made of standard PC components and should dissipate the heat pretty well. Let's put it all together. First, we need to attach connectors to the driver. Cover this up to make sure I don't get anything in the lens. Then, we need to wire up the diode to the driver. Finally, we can mount the diode onto the heatsink. Wow, this thing is beautiful. We've got the entire laser set up in the shipping container because it's too dangerous to be in the same room when testing. So we're gonna lock this up, leave a camera in there, and hopefully get some good footage. Three, two, one. Three, 
two, one. Oh, he's on fire. Nice. Three, two, one. Bogdan's finished installing the laser into our Cybertruck, officially bringing it into the 21st century. This laser is super dangerous. That's why it's really important to be using proper laser safety goggles whenever you're using any kind of laser. I'm gonna go somewhere else anyways, because I don't trust it. <laughs> Woo. Bad day for safety chicken. Aim down slightly. There we go. There we go. He's having a bad day. All right, that's been pretty awesome so far, but let's try using them together. We've got a concrete tower here. We're gonna light it on fire using the laser and then blast it to bits using our pneumatic cannon. Let's load her up. That was freaking awesome. We've militarized, hey, hey. We've militarized our half-scale cyber. We've militarized our half-scale cyber truck with this awesome pneumatic air cannon and this amazing laser dial that we got from Styro. <laughs> it's finally here. The first cyber truck in Canada, complete with full self-driving. Uh, yeah, it's actually the half-scale version that we made back in 2019. I guess you could say we beat Musk to market by four years. I'll link the whole playlist below. We've got five videos showing how we went from idea to creation in less than eight weeks. Anyway, with real Cybertrucks finally hitting the road, I figured it's about time that we upgrade this thing. Because last I checked my pre-order, I am 80,379th position in line to buy a new Cybertruck. So, I might as well upgrade this. Step one, giving it full self-driving. We're gonna need to work on that. Our half-scale Cybertruck features a full bulletproof stainless steel unibody design. Yeah, we tested it, just like Joe Rogan. I have a 90 pound compound bow, broadhead. We're gonna try right now, Joe. Nothing, little spec. It still stopped it. And for performance, we've got a tri-motor design, just like the real one. Motor in the back and two in the front. Ours clocks in at over a thousand foot-pounds of torque. We even out-towed an F-150 with it. Oh! That's a win! That's a win! Yeah, this thing's a beast. Yeah! Woo! But anyway, one of the features, one of, One of the features that we've added. One of the features that we added that I don't think actually made it onto the production model is the built in folding ramp. Now, while the Cyber Quad never came to fruition, the kids model was actually pretty awesome. And it fits perfectly. Oh, yep. See, perfect fit. Plus, you can charge it from any Tesla supercharger or our half-scale one. To control the Cybertruck, we put our own tablet in with a custom app. 
You got Google Maps, you got your ignition, your driving mode, gear shifter, we can control all the lights. Well, RGB too, because everything needs RGB and that gives it at least extra 100 horsepower. You can see our battery information and even the motor information. We even got Spotify. Overall, this thing's pretty awesome and one of my favorite projects, but we kind of put it on a shelf and it's been collecting dust ever since. So in this video, we're gonna soup it up, give it some real Tesla Model S batteries, make it remote controlled, and even try self-driving. Hey Ben, what's happening? So the steering that was in the Cybertruck in the beginning was maybe a bit of a compromise. So you can see there's um, a lot of steering wheel play. It's not power assisted in any way, so it's really hard to turn the wheels. To make this thing self-driving, we need to solve both those problems. We need a motor on there anyways, and why not make that motor power assisted? So I gotta get all the old steering out. Right now, we are trying to take out this component right here with like no room to move a wrench. It might be helpful if you could grab me some tools. Sure. All right. Let's try a 13. No. Holy crap, that's gonna suck. So all this is because the steering wheel has too much play? Yup. Now I'm gonna have to work onto this because at least it won't crush me. That's all I needed to do. That's all you needed to do? <laughs> what? what? That's a waste of time. That was a waste of time. Hunter made the modifications I need to drop in the new steering system. Hunter's probation does end on Saturday, so I just wanted to know, do you think he'll make it? The Saturday? There's ways he could screw it up stuff. Do you think you did a good job here? I couldn't have asked for more. I'll put that on LinkedIn. <laughs> ah, resume! <laughs> Let's see. It works! Honestly, I'm a little bit surprised. Where are oh. the batteries? Oh, they're in the shop. Oh, they are? Yeah. Why were we excited about this, Ben? because this is the first major part of the new Zapper truck build. Oh yeah! This is what we need! These came out of a Tesla Model S, and we are gonna put two of them instead of 16 in our half-scale Cybertruck. These weigh, I don't know, somewhere in the range of 40 pounds. <laughs> see why I It's like a giant up. box full of double A's. Does it fit through <laughs> here? Drive test number one, we'll see if it goes at all. Yeah, man! Okay, she stopped quick. What did we learn? Everything kind of works in principle. You gotta spend a bit of time tuning the driving, but in order to do that, I might need to install the batteries properly just for safety. About to test the charging for the first time. I've wired up the EMS after blowing it up like more times than I want to admit. Wired, we have the balance connectors, we have the temperature probes. So I think all we can do is plug it in and see what happens. We got our supercharger made by Jacob. It looks amazing. We got our charge port. So let's plug it in. We are charging. Now, the Cybertruck might be in production, but something that still hasn't materialized is the Cyberquad. All we got was the Cyberquad for kids, but I gotta say, they actually did a really good job with this. It's manufactured by it's manufactured by Radio Flyer, the same company that makes all the little electric cars for kids. Except this one is a quad. It's a lot of fun. In fact, it's so much fun, you can tip it. Which means Tesla actually issued a full recall of these just last year. Oh, Christy, that. The neat thing with the recall was, all you had to do to get your money back was remove the speed controller from inside and mail it back to Tesla and they'd cut you a check for $1,900 US, which was the original retail price for this. Now, the beauty is you can go to Amazon and buy a $50 speed controller and put it back inside of this, which makes it work again. Woo! You can upgrade it with an even bigger speed controller to go crazy fast. Whoa! Even some tire marks on the wall, it's fine. Oh, geez. You got a few speed marks. Last time you saw the Cybertruck, I had just taken it out for a spin out through a lot, and I brought it back in, need to do some tuning. So that night, I got ready to do some tuning, started to drive, and my steering servo blew up. You can see the little bits of teeth just kind of spread around in the servo all just ripped off. So we have a new idea. We took hydraulic steering out of a boat. So this new steering system is outboard yep. engine. 90 horsepower outboard engine hydraulic steering system. 
So this goes in the steering column of your boat. Then we got these hydraulic lines. These hydraulic lines run all the way down around to the piston that bogs you mounted. So we basically just replaced our original steering linkage with this hydraulic piston here. So as the wheels turn, this uh, extends and retracts and allows us to hopefully steer. So all this is because the steering wheel has too much play? Yup. Nice to be back working on the cyber truck, Boggy. Oh, it's been a while. Yeah, this is a fun project. Uh, we're getting ready to put the steering wheel in soon. Hey-o. We got the thing mounted. It took... Is that the steering wheel? This is the new steering wheel. It's inspired by the current cyber truck steering wheel with the same kind of design in the center. Oh! <laughs> ah! Oh, I forgot to tell me about that thing. I didn't think you uh, needed to be yeah. told about it, but <laughs> nice job avoiding that thing, done. There's a cable hanging from the bottom. Uh, just want to take a look at this? I don't know. Uh, what's the black cable dangling, guys? Oh, it's the bed light. It's the secondary bed. That's why the lights are all whack. So we have a few minor bucks to sort out. Our uh, steering wheel is a little <laughs> bit loose. Uh, our hydraulic lines are rubbing the wheel when we're turning. So yeah, only one of our front wheels is actually doing regen braking. So when you brake, the car steers to the side. There's wires hanging out the back. So we still have our, our work cut out for us. Yeah, there's, there's rattles, there's panel gaps. Um, <laughs> you don't get the range you expect. While Bogdan works away on some of the adjustments, I'm gonna focus on the self-driving software for our Cybertruck. For this application, we're gonna use Ardu Rover, which is the same software we used for our super successful security drone project a couple months ago. Once this RC car is driving autonomously, we should be able to take the same hardware and put it right into the Cybertruck. So I'm gonna go set it outside. Okay, so we got a pretty simple plan set up. So it's gonna start out front of the building, drive out a little bit through that field. And we're off. This could be a bit of a path, but for now we're taking it nice and cautious. And another 90 any day now, because you're not gonna like the grass. It seems to be happy and I think we got waypoint driving down. Uh, bogged in very nicely maybe this box for all the electronics, for all the self-driving. This should fit right behind the iPad on the Cybertruck. I've set it up so that the right stick will turn the steering on the truck. This is the first time steering the wheel with remote control. Nice. Nice! <laughs> this is sick. If you'd like to know how the electronics in this cyber truck work, make sure to check out our circuit diagram at maker.io. I'm ready, I'm pumped. Runaway acceleration is the biggest concern here, 100%. Am I concerned? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> It's working, boys. It's pretty smooth, Ben. Ben, can I drive you around or what? Uh, Bogney can drive me around. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ben is in full trust mode. Oh, get it. So just before the new year, I finally got the self-driving box installed in here, and we gave it a little test, and it nearly drove Bogney and I off a cliff. So I made some changes. We got to take it outside and drive around, see how it looks. So. Green in Logan's hand is going to show the position and the orientation properly. That's a success. We're not getting any satellites. We're Bruh. none. We're not Zero. seeing any. I want to see this thing drive. That's what I'm saying. The whole thing died again. It's always when you're about to test something that everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Take two. Yep. It's, it's still looking pretty good? Yep. Yeah. It's like... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why? Steering noise. Bruh. Oh, because the steering faulted out. We drove around, didn't break immediately. The steering motor faulted out because I think there's something very wrong in the belt system. Oh, what the heck? What? Marky, what's your hypothesis? My world broke. It's not a hypothesis, I can see my broken world. Bruh. <laughs> We'll see. This steering wheel. Uh -huh. Whew! Look at that click, so satisfying. A new day! We're just gonna try to go, you know, let's go over here so give it a bit of chance. Daryl, you might want to move. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna, it's go gonna turn right left. Towards you. We're just trusting it. You don't even have your hands ready to stop it. That's not bad. So we're gonna hopefully go around the light post, through the parking lot, make a U-turn in front of the garage, come all the way back, go in front of the main entrance, and come back exactly where we started fully autonomously. Hopefully. We have like 50 different waypoints that it's gonna try to hit. 50, and... you're a big liar, there's 80 of them. All right, and we're off. Great and... start. Okay, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. The, 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 the start was a little off, right? Okay, maybe not. 
Um, oh yeah. This is, this is fun. This is it's just trying to hit the waypoint. Yeah, okay? no, it's just trying to hit the waypoint. Maybe I did get to give away too many waypoints, and it's not. It might just be way overfitted. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yep. So I think here's the problem. I think I put down way too many waypoints. They're way too close. And it's basically, it's undercompensating. It's planning ahead, but since the waypoints are so close to each other, it's only planning ahead like the next like three meters. Can you tell me what happened uh, last night after we stopped recording? Yeah, so we wanted to go test the truck going up and down the hill and we try to stop it and the stop buttons don't work. I heroically jumped on the back, reached through the missing windshield, and turned it off from the iPad. Ogden was saved. <laughs> yeah, so we have our steering radius set, and hopefully the entire thing will be running much smoother. And we're off. Full autonomous mission. Gonna go nice and wide here. It's gonna be a pretty strong turn. And then uh, it's doing the turn. Ooh, this is good so far. Nice and exactly close. Where we were. Yep. Look at that track. Yeah, that positioning is really good. That's tracking really well. I did drift out a little bit towards Mega you Hex. You did, yep. You come to nice and center. So now I should do a nice sharp right turn. <laughs> yep. Oh. And then I, we did a really wide turn around here. This is really testing our uh, our radius circles. This is working Carolyn, really you well. Can the excitement on this now. is really working really well. Oh, this is good. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> That's so good. Holy so good. crap. So Pull back right around. And then it should stop right where Daryl is <laughs> for our passenger pickup. That was really good. That was that hit every point. Look how good that entire waypoint mission was. Yeah. Literally perfect. <laughs> Zero interventions. Should we call James? I'm James. And I'm Ben. And, and we're, we're going, going for a drive. drive. Woo! <laughs> we're gonna try a basic waypoint mission around the field. See what happens. Which means uh, we're removing the steering wheel. Which means I have no way of saving this. All right, this is this is self-driving. We are gonna go up the hill. Hopefully not kill Daryl. Pretty good. It might struggle getting up the hill. Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. Here we go. <laughs> up the hill. We've only given it 23% throttle. Oh, oh, wow, what, what the? That's great for the differential. So I'm guessing you just didn't mark a waypoint out at the corner here. Yeah. That was my bad. <laughs> well, I set the waypoint <laughs> not at the apex of the corner. Yeah, it is self drives. I think we'll be uh, we'll, we'll make it to market in like I don't know two months. Well, we know it can go down this hill. You want to go down this hill? <laughs> no. <laughs> We've committed. <laughs> Are you steering? Sure. <laughs> look on Daryl's faces. A little bit to the right. Oh, we're fine. Oh. <laughs> Go to the right. Go to the right. <laughs> Woo! We did it! <laughs> We've put together this state-of-the-art obstacle course for the Cybertruck to drive through. And just to be clear, our Cybertruck doesn't have programmed obstacle avoidance, so this should be fun. So we've got some test subjects, and we're gonna get their thoughts on it. Okay. Are you excited, Logan? So, there's a lot of obstacles, Daryl. Yeah, I know. How many people have done this so far? Three, actually. Is that including Ben and Bogdan as two? Yeah. Great. <laughs> I'm locked in. Ready? I'm locked in, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, it's making noise. <laughs> I don't know what path it's supposed to do. Okay, first obstacle. You got it. You got it. Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, we haven't hit anything yet. Yeah. This is crazy! Really oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is <he gonna> oh. <laughs> I think it's off course. Why is it like taunting me with that one? <laughs> I mean, half the time the off switch doesn't work. That's too close to the hill. Minus the one casualty. Oh. Hey, you did pretty good! Oh my god! That was sweet! Oh, are you terrified? No, I've been in this with you driving it, so I think I'm fine. What are your thoughts on autonomous vehicles? Because they don't run over people too often. Should be fine. Give me some more room. There you go, look at that. Oh, look it much, pops up. Oh. Look how much, we don't want to have, to have any possibility of driving this, right? It feels like a bad amusement park ride, you know? 
Oh, we're going towards, uh, okay, no, we're fine. Look, I'm just going through a walk in the park with my neighbors. Oh my God. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Okay, this feels great. Um, yeah, we didn't hit anything yet. <laughs> um, it's, it's fine. <laughs> that hasn't happened before. Wow. I don't think I was able to turn because there's mannequin parts Did I in pass the my G? <laughs> Wow. Was that I, planned? I don't think, no. I thought I was getting pranked. That was terrifying. Let's see how it does with this course. Ooh, that's a bit faster than I thought it would go. It's going through the trees on this map. Let's hope we don't hit Mr. Red Mannequin. Oh, God. Ooh, it's tight. Oh, boy. Oh, there's the wheelchair. Oh, oh I just missed the wheelchair. Miss, oh, oh, God. Oh, ooh, oh, his leg. Ooh. Two out of three pedestrians survived. If that was the trolley problem, this car would pass. Woo! So uh, we're going to get Ian to try this. We should tell him it's going to be perfect and then have it hit everything. <laughs> so to really test the limits of the system, it will seem like you're almost going to crash into all these things. Just stay with it, you'll be fine. And away we go. Stand on the road, little bumpy, heading for the pedestrian. Oh no, oh no. I'm not sure if that was supposed to happen. I think it's all supposed to happen. Not the concrete, not the concrete. Why the concrete, why, why? What is this? Hey! <laughs> We adjusted everything. It's the top speed at 80. Like 40 or 50 kilometers an hour. Do you want a helmet? No. Okay. Oh! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go to the meeting that we're supposed to be in right now. <laughs> When it comes to self-driving cars, one of the most common things that comes up is something called the trolley problem. If you're not familiar with the trolley problem, imagine this scenario. On one track, there's four mannequins. On the other track, there's one mannequin. The car has to choose one of these paths. Which path will it choose? Now, most humans would probably choose to run over the one person to save the four. You know, the needs of the many outweigh the few. But the thing with AI is we could actually be recognizing these people and potentially the AI could actually assign value to human life. And maybe it would actually decide to kill four mannequins instead of one. In just a moment, Bogdan's gonna initiate the self-driving module of our half-scale Cybertruck. Now, in case anything goes wrong, I've got this emergency off. All right, Bogdan, hit it. Bogdan. I was the logical choice. The goddamn robot's done! Not only is the Cybertruck super smart, it's also super convenient. Whoa! <laughs> but how are you gonna go back up? Bro, that's a long trek, I'm not gonna lie. Here's your ride, sir. I trust this bad boy. Oh, bumpy ride. Too easy. You're probably wondering why I've got the zipline. Well, it's for a video we just made, which is coming out super soon. It's flying like Thor's hammer, but you can watch it today if you become a YouTube member. Go check it out. Let's do this thing. Now where's my ride? Slowly come down the <laughs> two miles from now. There it is! Round two! A little impressive? Let's go again. It was crazy impressive. And it's like, it's cool by itself! That ain't going nowhere! Got the forklift stuck. <laughs> Can I have 
full send because it's kinetic rope. Someone sit on the front. Mike, sit on the front of the car. Hop in, you're our counterweight. Give the wheels some traction. Yeah, baby! Hunter, you gotta steer! A little bit. Yeah. Okay, okay this is gonna suck. Woo! <laughs> Uh, this was supposed to be a quick revisit project. A few weeks to fix up and yeah, after all those bugs we fought, to be honest, I'm actually impressed the real Cybertruck made it to market in just over four years. We started working on this back in September and it's almost February now. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. We really can't do this without you guys and the more views these videos get, the crazier the projects we get to do. If you want to help support the channel even more, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button next to subscribe. Thanks for watching.